Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea, a Seattle-based developer and designer. In this screencast, we will be diving into HTML structure. As far as concepts are concerned, most of what I discuss will be touched on within the Introduction to HTML lesson. However, there will be some new terminology used within this screencast as well. I'll be defining and elaborating on new concepts like semantics, accessibility, and heading hierarchy. The larger goal here is that by the end of this video you will have a solid grasp of HTML and page structure. Go ahead and pause so that you can take a second to read through these learning goals. Before we move into our project, let's just take a moment to zoom out and think about HTML from a very high level. What is this type of language and how does it differ from other languages? If you stick with web development, you are eventually going to encounter JavaScript. And it's important to realize that there are some fundamental differences between a language like JavaScript and a language like HTML. HTML is classified as a declarative language. Declarative languages describe a desired result without explicitly listing steps that must be performed. For example, if we look at the page we're going to be working on, we have some text and some images. The code for this main heading can be found here. In line 2. You may be familiar with this terminology already. We have our opening tag, our closing tag, and the, the content, important schedules. This entire piece of code is called an element. The important point here is that since HTML is a declarative language, we don't need to programmatically tell the browser how to display our content, in this case, important schedules. We can almost think of our HTML tags as black boxes where we don't need to worry about the implementation details for how the content of a tag gets displayed to the screen. We can just state the end goal and move on. In other words, with languages like HTML and CSS, we are telling the browser what to do, not how to do it. Uh, so there's a lot packed in here. This is really a pretty fascinating topic. Uh, and there's a, there's a great video that Computerfile put out. Uh, and by the way, this this computer file channel is great for those of you who are interested in computer science. I'll go ahead and share this video and resources just in case anyone wants some more context here. Okay, so now that we have thought about HTML in terms of language classification, the next thing I want to draw everyone's attention to is the overall structure of our page. Right now, this is very bare bones because there's no CSS styling it up. We're only dealing with our HTML and HTML is all about structure. As developers, whenever we are making a site, we should be asking ourselves, what are the important pieces of content? What is the information hierarchy of our page going to look like? Often, a good way to start thinking about this is to focus on our heading hierarchy. So in this case, it looks like we should have an H1, an H2, an H3, another H2, another H3. When we look at our code for this page, sure enough, we have an H1, an H2, an H3. But then this is interesting. On line 5, we have an H4. So we're going from an H2 to an H4 and then back to an H3. This isn't a great habit to get into. Really, there are two problems here. The first problem deals with a concept known as accessibility. When we create an HTML document like this and publish it to the web, it's not just humans and other developers who will be viewing our HTML code. Software like search engines and screen readers will also be trying to make sense of our document. When it comes to our headings in particular, some screen readers use these heading tags to help a user navigate through a page. When we skip headings, this can create a confusing navigational experience for them. So to improve the accessibility of our site, this type of heading skipping should be avoided. Now the second problem, which is really more of the main issue here, is that this tag doesn't adequately capture the meaning of its content. This isn't really a heading at all. This is just some textual information about Jinx. Because the tag doesn't capture the meaning of its content, we can say that this is semantically incorrect. A more semantically meaningful tag to use here would be our good old friend, the P or paragraph tag. So I'll go ahead and correct this now. Now I'm going to save it, and when I go back, I want you to, to pay attention to this, to this line, Jinx is interested in food, and watch what happens when I refresh. 
notice that it looks like the font size and font weight of this sentence has actually changed. You might think that this contradicts what I said before about HTML dictating the structure of a page while CSS controls the style or presentation of a page. Actually, this isn't a contradiction. Browsers like Chrome have their own CSS that they apply to certain HTML elements. That browser styling is what we are seeing here with the various font sizes and font weights which are associated with the different headings. It looks like this line, magic is interested in metaphysics and philosophy, is also using an H4 tag. So let me go ahead and use the more semantically correct paragraph tag here as well. And now that I have corrected our heading hierarchy, let's think about the actual nesting of our HTML. Right now I would say that we have a very flat structure. What I mean by that is that most of our elements have no container or high-level sectioning parent elements. This tree diagram can help us to visualize the structure we have right now. Each node or circle in this tree represents an element. So we see that our body element contains all of these child elements on the first level of our tree. Similarly, our UL and OL elements contain these associated LI elements. So these LIs are the children and this UL is the parent and both of these elements are grandchildren to the body element. This tree is only three levels deep and I want to give it a bit more structure. But why do we want to introduce more complexity here? The answer is that with this increased complexity come some advantages. For example, enhanced readability for both humans and algorithms, for both developers and software like screen readers and search engines. Another big advantage is that if you give your HTML structure some thought, it can make styling a page later on much easier. This will become particularly important when you learn about using CSS to lay out a page. Okay, let's take another look at our page and think about which content can be grouped. So all of this content is related to Jinx, so I would probably throw it into its own container. And all of this content is related to Magic, so it would get its own container. Similarly, the scheduling information is related content with a natural heading, so I would probably create a subcontainer for, for that information. I'm just going to go ahead and create containers for this content now. I could use div elements for this. However, as this portion of the page has a natural heading, a section tag would probably be more appropriate here. If this h2 didn't exist, or if I needed a container solely for styling purposes, then I'd probably be more inclined to use a semantically meaningless div here. Since that is not the case, I'm going to use this more appropriate section tag. Just cut and paste this content in. I also want it to group this scheduling information. So I'll use the section tag for that as well. And I'll do the same thing within the magic section of the page. Notice how we are going from an H3 to an H2. Isn't this an example of heading skipping, which we already know should be avoided? Well, from an accessibility standpoint, this is fine since this H3 is the last heading in its section tag, and this H2 is the first heading in its section tag. So with those edits in place, let's take a look at what a tree representation of this HTML would look like. Here's what the old tree looked like. Here's the new tree. As expected, we see that this is a more complex structure. We added two levels of depth to our tree. What we get with this increased complexity is a more semantically meaningful structure. This is an important concept which can be applied to all kinds of scenarios. It's this concept of complexity management. As developers, we need to be asking ourselves, is this move going to introduce more complexity into a system? If the answer to that question is yes, then we need to think carefully about what benefits this increased complexity gives us, and if it's really worth the costs. In other words, whenever we are increasing the complexity of anything, we need to do a pros-cons analysis of the situation. In this sort of toy example, I am confident that the pros outweigh the cons, but unfortunately problems won't always be this clear-cut. I think it's important to start thinking about this type of thing early on. One last accessibility improvement that I wanted to make 
is I wanted to add all attributes to our image elements. This alternative text will show up if an image doesn't load. What's more, screen readers will read out this alt text to visually impaired users. The text we use should be descriptive but concise. For example, we should avoid phrases like image of or photo of since that information is redundant. So I'll just say orange cat resting and black cat resting. Now that we've cleaned up the HTML for this page, let's take a look at a second page. Since the font styling for this text is all the same, in this case it's a bit more difficult for us to assess what our heading hierarchy is. When we can, we should always try to design around a site's content itself. So maybe this is actually a good thing as it forces us to really focus on the information here. Uh, frequently asked questions seems like the main heading for this page. How much do cats kill? and are cats killing for fun, those also seem like they should be headings but of a lower rank. So let's go back to our, our text editor and open up the, the HTML file for this. And so this is a, a great example of dividus, which is something we all want to avoid. Almost every element in this document uses the semantically meaningless div element. This brings up a good point. HTML is a very lenient, fault-tolerant language, and from a, a strictly technical point of view, this isn't wrong. However, from a content and accessibility and a readability point of view, we can do better. We want to clean up our formatting and pick tags that best capture the semantic meaning of our content. So let's do that now. I'm going to just copy and paste this into a new file I've created. So that way we can compare and contrast when I'm done here. Now I want to clean up my formatting. I believe most style guides recommend two spaces for indentation. We want to indent in such a way that our nesting becomes clear. In other words, indentation should help us quickly assess which elements are contained within which tags. I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Uh, I have a, a package within my text editor that will do the formatting for me. Now let's go ahead and focus on the heading hierarchy. Since we are not using semantic tags, this code isn't very readable, and I have to actually read the content of each tag to pick out my heading. But I believe this is the H1, the H2, and the other H2. Let's save these changes and take another look at our page. We see that the browser's default styling is now getting applied to our heading elements. Visually, this makes it much easier for us to pick out the important bits of information and the areas of interest in our little page. Now I want to scale out a bit and think about the more general sections of this page. This is going to be our navigation, which I'll be setting up in the next video when we learn about anchors. It makes sense to include this information in the header alongside this banner image. This is going to be the, the main content of our page and down here we have footer information. Let's go back to our text editor so that way we can use semantic tags to mo more coherently group this information. Luckily we have some comments and some ID attributes to help orient us uh, within this dividus document. Uh, I don't think that we really need a container for this content, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this div now. So we see that this div has the ID of header, but it's only including, this div only includes the image, and I, you know, I think it makes sense for it to include the navigation as well. So I'm also going to delete this containing div. Uh, maybe if I want it to style this image specially, I might use a div container for it. But since we're not worried about styling right now, I, I'm just going to get rid of it. And I'm going to make this div a header. Now I can delete this comment since it's no longer relevant. And we see we have a 
container div for navigation. There is the more semantically correct nav tag for, for this now. It's HTML5. I'm also going to delete this comment. So our main content looks like it also has a container div with an ID of questions. Again, I don't think that that's super necessary right now, but you know, maybe if I want it to style this this content in in some unique way, I might include a div there. I'm going to use main tags for this content. And then for the footer information, we have a footer tag. Now back within main, I'm going to use the paragraph tag for this sentence here. The body count stands at over 2 million creatures each year. Similarly, we want to do the same thing for uh, the second sentence. And I like to be very explicit in my sectioning of content, so I am also going to use the section tag to group each of these H2 areas of the page. Lastly, for copyright information, it makes sense to use the small tag. Now I just want to clean up my formatting a bit. I'm going to get rid of that comment and clean up the vertical spacing. Uh, and the indentation got messed up a, a, a little bit in this process, so I'm going to again use my beautify package to clean that up. Finally, I want to remember to include an alt attribute within my image tag. Comic of a cat chasing a mouse. With those changes in place, we have created a much more coherently sectioned document. If we compare it side by side with our original document on the left here, we very readily see that it is much more concise and much more readable. We went from using divs for almost every element on the page to not using a single div at all. This is the difference between a semantically thoughtless document and a semantically meaningful one. In the past, we didn't have all of these semantic tags at our disposal. In those days, dividus was a much more prevalent issue. With the advent of HTML5, it became much easier for us to create coherent structures, so we should really be taking advantage of these newer tags. We've used pretty simple examples to introduce some new concepts, but it's important to realize that things are not always this cut and dry. When we start introducing CSS layout methods, that's when structure really starts to become more important, but also more nuanced. For now, I encourage everyone to start giving some thought to the structures that you create and the projects that you're working through. Also, as you browse the internet, think about the information architecture of the pages you encounter. Ask yourself, how would I group this content? What tags would I use here? Okay, everyone, that's all I got. Please remember to check out the additional resources for this video, and thank you kindly for your time.